bigoted dude gets arrested because he thinks a woman can't fix computers? Back in 2006, I worked for one of those big box stores that had an IT desk, formerly known as Nerd Herd LOL, where people could bring devices in to get serviced if there was a problem. We were located in Columbus, GA, which is right over a bridge from Phoenix City, Alabama. This is important because where our store was placed, we would normally get a lot of servicemen and women coming up from Fort Benning who were generally pretty cool. But we would also get folks, mostly from Alabama, who were, let's just say, slightly unfavorable to folks of a certain skin color or gender. No offense to those who live in AL who are totally awesome. You know who you are. Three. Now, I'm a 5'1 inch girl who, at the time, weighed a total of 120 pounds soaking wet. I was practically a hobbit. I was also one of the lead technicians in the department. I was the one the new hires went to if they were confused or couldn't troubleshoot certain problems. The team I worked with was amazing. The general manager of the store was great, and the supervisor of my department was the man. I would regularly go out for drinks with these people. One of the best places I've ever worked, even though it was retail. One day I'm working the counter to check customers in and do evaluations and diagnostics to give an estimate of what the repair price would be. In comes, let's call him Joe. He's wore a cut-off t-shirt, worn denim jeans, and a baseball cap with a Confederate flag on it that just barely covered his business in the front, party in the back haircut. I'm not one to judge on looks. I've had plenty of people come in looking exactly the same way Tis Guy did who have been an absolute delight to work with. Never judge a book by its cover, kids. But I still have my defenses up, just in case. I really hoped it wasn't going to go the not-so-friendly route. I was unfortunately wrong about Dear Joe. Joe walks up to the counter with his PC tower and practically slams the unit on the desk. Joe. I need this fixed. It's broken. Me. Okay, sir. Let me have a look and I'll see if I could... Joe cuts me off and stares at me with a disgusted look on his face. Joe. Excuse me. Me. If you give me a moment, sir... I'll be able to take a look at your computer and... Joe. Aw, oh, hell no! It was at this point that I realized where this was inevitably going to go wrong. Me. Unfortunately, sir. I won't be able to give you an estimate if you don't let me diagnose your computer. Joe. There is no way in hell a woman knows about computers. I'm not letting you touch my computer. Get me the manager. Oh yes, I thought. This is going to be fucking awesome. I'm sure he wanted to talk to the general manager of the store, but I couldn't resist. Cue malicious compliance. I could have pulled the I'm the manager thing because I was one of the senior staff, but my direct boss was actually out back working on repair projects, and I couldn't help but get excited about how this was going to go down. Me. As lovely as sweet tea. Of course, sir. Right away, sir. Mike, my supervisor, the guy who ran our department and not the general manager of the store, was elbow deep in a motherboard replacement when I walked in and gave him the biggest shit-eating grin. Me. Hey Mike. There's a guy out there asking for the manager. He looks at me confused because he was just supervisor. But I then proceeded to tell him exactly what was waiting for him out front. His face split into the brightest smile. He then proceeded to walk out to the front. Have I mentioned that Mike is a 6'3", 280 pounds black man who looked like he could eat a Mack truck for lunch? He was such a big, lovable teddy bear. We all adored him. The moment Mike stepped out, the customer freaked. Mike. Hello, sir. I hear there's a problem. Joe lost it. It start with a fuck no, before devolving into a racist tirade that I have never witnessed in my life. I'm from Massachusetts, so this was awful, yet amazing to watch. Like a car crash. I just couldn't look away. Not that we have no racism in the Northeast, but damn. Joe kept screaming using the nastiest slur, you know the one, over and over again, while staff and customers alike watched in blatant horror. Security ended up having to come over to try to calm the man down. Our entire security team was black as well, so naturally Joe went even more crazy. Eventually, the police had to be called because the man was threatening me, calling me a cunt and a bitch, and threatening security and my boss, using that word that is not okay. My general manager got called out of his office and immediately called the police to have the man removed. God bless whichever dispatcher who received the call was, because they dispatched two black officers to the scene. Me and my general manager were literally the only white people involved in this train wreck, aside from bigoted Joe, and I watched with unbridled glee as Joe was cuffed and taken away by the police. Watching Joe foam at the mouth as he was dragged away made my whole week. Thank you for the entertainment, bigoted Joe. Story 2 
Was told I had an eight and a half hour shift and not to leave early, so I started working for only eight and a half hours. I work as a supervisor at a manufacturing plant, and I was hired for an eight hour shift as the nighttime supervisor. As soon as I started, they changed and said they really considered the shift to be from 11 p.m. to 730, so they would need it to be eight and a half hours. I'm salaried. There wasn't much I could do, and it wasn't a big deal, so I said okay. As I get into a groove working there, I find out that the second shift supervisor is a train wreck. No one would describe him to me, just saying I had to meet him. He leaves an hour or two early from his shift, two, three times a week. Friday nights, he leaves the plant at 530 and tells them to call him if there are any problems. He calls out at a minimum once a week. It's psychotic. Every time he's out, I come in at around 8 p.m. to cover the last three hours of his shift and my full shift. At least once a week, I just do it. I figure the company is going to deal with it, but as time passes, they obviously aren't. Structurally, the company is just as bad as him. Infighting, rivalries, backstabbing, all of that. But I stay on nights so I don't see it much. Then Sarah starts as my boss. I actually have two bosses, which is how every successful employee works. Sarah is a nightmare. Sarah wants me to work 11. 11 on MTW and 11, 10 on Friday. I dig in my heels, document like crazy. And after a couple months of harassment, HR actually backs me up and she has to stop. But now Sarah is angry. And she sees me leaving at 715 one morning after coming in two hours early. She sends an email clarifying our time expectations. Second shift train wreck calls in that night. So I come in at 8. And the next morning Sarah sees me leave at 710. I get an email saying she is coming in early to talk to me. And when she shows up, I'm getting a formal warning for my early departures going into my personnel file. I've never been written up in my life. During the meeting with HR in attendance, she said I'm expected to be there for my eight and a half hour shift. I made sure that the expectation was on record for an eight and a half hour shift, which HR documented. The next week, the second shift supervisor is out two days. After the first day, Sarah asks me the next morning why I didn't come in early as there were problems on his shift and I said I fulfilled my eight and a half hour shift and I'm not responsible for his. They had to hire a contractor at $1.125 an hour to cover all of his missed time, which amounted to 19 weeks this past year. Eventually, they hired a fourth supervisor at $1.85K per year to cover his gaps. Sarah got demoted, and I only ever work eight and a half hours. Story 3. So I wore the wrong type of underwear in the pool. I-24M hosted a friend from college, also 24M, that I haven't seen since before the pandemic. Shortly after he arrives, we head to a local bar and grill in our neighborhood. We decided to do the 15-20 minute walk instead of drive so we didn't have to worry about leaving the car. I was joined by my roommate, 25M and also a good friend, and his new-ish girlfriend, 22F, who I don't know that well, but I have always had friendly encounters with when we have hung out. At the bar, drinks flowed freely and my friend seemed to really hit it off with our crew. We stayed longer than expected and it was fully dark, and we were well buzzed by the time we decided to walk home. It was still hot outside when we got to the apartment complex, so my roommate suggested that we hit the community pool. The pool and hot tub were technically closed for the night, but it isn't too close to any of the units, and generally no one cares if you are responsible and don't break glass bottles or anything like that. After debating whether to head back to our place to change first, my roommate insisted that we're all friends here, and that we could all just go in the pool in our underwear. Everyone agreed on this, although my roommate's girlfriend announced, you guys have fun with that, and proceeded to lounge next to the pool on one of the deck chairs and scroll Instagram. We strip down and hop in the pool and are having a pretty good time just messing around. After some time had passed, my roommate was chatting with his girlfriend and then quietly approached me afterwards. Apparently his girlfriend was very uncomfortable with me wearing just briefs in the pool. Both my roommate and my friend were wearing boxer briefs, and she wanted me to go all the way back to the apartment and change into a swimsuit. I initially protested and said it was his idea in the first place, and how everyone was in their underwear and none of us cared. And what's the difference? It's not like my underwear was white, see-through, or anything like that. My roommate asked me to go change for him as a favor so that it didn't turn into an issue between him and her. I was pissed, but decided to let it go for the time being. When I got back to the apartment, an idea popped into my head when it occurred to me that I still had a swimsuit from when I used to swim on the club team in college. 
so I put on my speedo and head back out armed with another six-pack for the boys in only a t-shirt, towel wrapped around my waist, and flip-flops. I get back to the pool, announced I had changed into my swimsuit, as requested, drop the towel and ditch the tea, and launch into a wicked cannonball into the pool. I can see a wry smile on my roommate's face, but nothing else was said about my choice of attire. We go on in the pool, and a few minutes later, she announces that she's tired and is going to bed. We stay out late, including more beers and laughs in the hot tub while the girlfriend was asleep at our place.